character men when I was growing up. I was 14, 15, up to 20 years old, and I knew David Burns and Jack Guilford and Zero Mostel and Lou Jacoby. Those incredible character men who taught me, they were my master class. And hopefully I'm a link in the chain that I can pass it on to the uh, character men who are coming up behind me. That's fantastic. Um, how long is this show going to run? I heard it was extended a second time. We're, we're extended through uh, April 6th okay. right now. Okay, that's fantastic. Yeah, it really is, because I love doing it. It's a joy to do this show. And it was originally at the Metropolitan Room, I heard. It was a Metropolitan Room, yeah. When, when I first started talking about doing this, uh, people were saying, well, uh, why don't you try it as a nightclub act? Mm -hmm. Because people don't, uh, you don't have to spend a fortune and all that. So I did it uh, originally at the Triad in 2012. Oh. In fact, th this show was born on a cruise ship in the middle of three hurricanes. Really? Yeah, because it was still an idea I had in my head, but I still had all the material and I was working on it in the videos. And I was performing on a cruise ship doing another show. Hmm. And all of a sudden we had three hurricanes. We couldn't pull into Halifax. And the cruise director said, do you have anything? And I said, well, yeah, I've got this show about my life. And he said, we're putting it on. And the response was fantastic. Yes. So I knew at that point we had something mm -hmm. entertaining. So how long did it take you to put it together, this new incarnation of it? You know, it really was very quick. Really? Yeah, it seemed to just happen by itself. I knew the stories I wanted to tell. I knew the arc that I wanted to tell of one of my very first jobs in the Broadway theater was selling orange drink yes. at the back of the house and how uh, the orange drink keeps getting more expensive with yes. the <laughs> passing year, which turns into a big laugh at the end of the yes. show. And uh, it, it's just the personal relationship I had with these guys. I knew the songs I wanted to do. They were my favorite songs, and they all related back to these guys in a certain way. Mm -hmm. So Bob Bartley, my friend Bob Bartley, who uh, puts together Broadway backwards, Mm -hmm. uh, which I've done for the last couple of years, which I can't do because I'm working here that night. Oh. But I get to go to the party anyway. Well, that's uh, good. <laughs> that's the so most important thing. Bob and I started talking, and he is a brilliant director, and he's a brilliant editor and a storyteller. Mm -hmm. So we sat down and we collaborated on this, and we tried it out at the Metropolitan Room, and the very first re review said, this is not a cabaret piece, this is a play. Right. <clears throat> so we, we deepened the play and... Uh, as a musical. A, as a musical. Yes. It's, it's not, I think it's a play with music. Right. You know, and then um, it's so funny. We were just sitting there one day and had a call from Peter Napolitano. Mm -hmm. And there was a play that they had scheduled for this slot here at Urban Stages. And uh, they didn't feel it was ready. Right. So they ran into Stephen Hanks, who's a critic, and they said, boy, we're looking for a one-man musical. Do you know anything? And he said, yeah, Character Man. That's fantastic. And I knew Peter for years, so mm -hmm. uh, he and Francis and I met, and we decided we would do it. That's so great. here we are. Well, I recommend everyone from Broadway Showbiz should go and see it. It's, if you are interested in the history of the, of the theater, it's very interesting. And a lot of the characters I knew, but some I didn't even know about. Who didn't you know? I don't remember actually okay. who I did. There were a few people I didn't know the name, but right. you know, um, I wish I remembered. Well, which... you know, I, I say in the show it's the curse of the character people right. that you never remember their name. Right. But as soon as you see their face, exactly. you go, Oh, I loved him. Or, right. I loved her. Absolutely. So, um, character men, there, there wouldn't be leading players if there weren't people around to support them. Right. Well, who, do you have a favorite of the character men? Well, it has to be David Burns. Okay. Because he was my mentor and he was my best friend and I spent more time with Davey than anybody else and really literally grew up backstage. Mm -hmm. First at the Majestic when he was doing Music Man, then at the St. James when he was doing Do Re Mi, then at the Alvin when he was doing uh, Forum, mm -hmm. and then back to the St. James when he was doing Dolly. That's and great. then he did uh, Lovely Ladies at the Majestic, then mm -hmm. at the old Helen Hayes, and the Walnut Street, and the old Morosco, which is gone. I threw myself in front of the wrecking ball. Uh, Celeste Holm and I were arrested for trying to prevent the demolition of the Morosco Theater. Oh, really? That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Wow. But wow. it didn't, didn't help. No, the Marriott Marquis is right there in its place now. Oh, wow. Yeah. 1983, we all... Celeste Joe, Joe Papp led the, the charge for the Morosco to be saved. 
Oh, was it a beautiful old theater? It was a beautiful theater. It was about a, about a thousand seats, maybe 900. And it was a very intimate theater where mm -hmm. uh, all the great plays, uh, Death of a Salesman played there and All My Sons and The Price. What and, year, do you know? Well, it, it was torn down in 83. Okay. So, uh, I think yeah. I was in that theater. I was in oh, that theater. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I yeah, mean, I was Harris around. Yeah, played there. A lot of a lot of great shows. It and was one of the prime theaters in New York, the Morasco. Yes, I, I am sure I was. I saw Death of a Salesman there, I believe. What year was that? Well, no, there? I'm talking about the original. Death oh, the of original. Salesman before okay. you were born, 1949. Oh yeah, no, I wasn't there then. <laughs> no, they, they did a production of Death of, the, uh, of a Salesman at the Barrymore. I think okay. uh, both I, of them were there with Philip Hoffman and yes. with, uh, Dustin Hoffman. They were I saw the Dustin Barrymore. Hoffman version when I was Barrymore. very young. <clears throat> yeah. I remember seeing that when I was, uh, you know, very young. Yes. So I went to school with Dustin Hoffman's daughter. Oh, yes? Yes. Did you get to Karina know him? Hoffman. I met him um, twice, actually. Once in Fiorucci when I was in high school, um, by accident, actually. Right. And then once he went, came to pick up Karina from my house. Uh, when I was a child, so I guess an adopted child that he had, Karina Hoffman. Great. A while ago. Yeah, he's and a good Davey actor. And Davy Burns, my mentor, played his father in a movie called uh, Who is Harry Kellerman and Why is he saying these terrible things about me? Oh, wow. Another bomb of a movie. I don't know that film. <clears throat> but the whole thing's on YouTube, and it's a very interesting film. Oh. Barbara Harris, another great film. Oh, I star. love her. She's she gives a dynamite performance, and it's all New York people. Oh, that's Who is Harry great. Kellerman, and why is he saying these terrible and things? Are you, are you in it? I'm not in it, okay. no. But it was written by Herb Gardner, okay. who wrote uh, A Thousand Clowns. Oh, wonderful. Uh, so it's, it's got a good pedigree, and it's a very interesting film. That's great. All right, so what... what do you think, I mean, of all this, I mean, the, the interesting thing to me, I don't want to ruin the, the show for people who haven't seen it, but it's like, it's a history of you talking about all these extremely interesting it is. It is. character and it's, men. It uh, is, it's kind of my life with my father, who mm -hmm. was a character. He yes. was larger than life, and uh, he loved to travel, and he loved Broadway, and he worked on Wall Street, and he had all these great clients, like Ethel Merman was one of his clients. Mm -hmm. So we got to know Miss Merman. And oh, what, is, what was Ethel Merman like? <clears throat> she was, you, what you saw was what you got. Mm -hmm. She was very down to earth. She spoke her mind. Uh, I have a picture of myself and uh, Ethel on my 30th birthday. Oh, wow. And uh, she was taking us out for Chinese food in Los Angeles. And the first words out of her mouth, about six of us sat down at the, the table for the Chinese food. The first words out of her mouth were, I don't share. Really? <laughs> That's very funny. So what did she order? Do you remember? You know, I don't. Oh. She, whatever it was, she didn't share it. Okay, got it. Most people like to share Chinese food. It's like fun I, to I'm taste her. things. I, I, I get you don't my, like to I share? I with everybody else. Unless you're having spare ribs, I'll have one of those. Got it, I see. <laughs> I personally, my friends do Chinese every day, and we like to share different things because I don't want to just have one thing. But, right. But what did, what did, do you remember what you had when you ate with her? No, I mean, okay. it was a long time ago. Probably chow fun. That's what I usually Oh, have. yum. That's delicious. Yeah, I'm, what I'm kind do you fun. like? I, I like roast pork chow fun. That's my favorite, one of Is my it? favorites. Well, yes. You want to go out now. Sometime. Absolutely. Have, have but you won't fun. share. We'll get Eat our own. Chow fun. <laughs> Chow, is, chow fun is delicious. It's great. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah, um, the cottage. I don't know if you've ever been to that Chinese restaurant on the west side. They make a great pork I'm chow sure fun. Have. And they have free wine. It's not very good wine, but it, it's okay. But it's free. But it's free. And the operative word being free. Sweet and free. It goes well oh, with the Chinese I food. Like. And then you wouldn't like it. No. It's, it's not. It's no, not I like my wines dry. Got it. Yes. Okay. It's called crisp white. It's. Crisp. And it, Crisp white is box wine. It's not very good, uh, but it, uh, you, it grows on you after a while. You get used to it. And in the beginning, I used to bring my own wine, and then I got used to it. So, but all right. So, you, what was Merman like as a person, other than not sharing her Chinese food? Well, she was just. She's one of the greatest talents got, of all she was time. Just very down to earth. Um, she, she was just a really lovely lady. Okay. Um, who I don't think had a, the, the happiest life off stage. No. But certainly she uh, was a legend on stage, you know, and I was lucky I got to see her in several shows. Oh, wow. And I Which shows did you see? Of well, her? I saw her in Gypsy. Okay. And oh. I saw her in uh, the revival of Annie Get Your Gun. Mm -hmm. And I saw her in uh, a Hello, Dolly. Oh, wow. So uh, I, I got to see Merman on stage quite a bit. That's great. I've never seen Merman live. Well, now it's too late. I know. Yeah. I no, mean, you had to have seen her live. She never translated to any other medium. The, well, the, 
the on stage was her. Well, Call Me Madam, the movie I love. I you know, saw it recently. A, that's a good translation because yes. they really kept to the script with Call Me Madam yes. and tried to recreate what she had done on stage. So mm -hmm. I think that was a very good. Was she in Call Me Madam on stage too? Oh sure. Oh wow. Yeah, I would and have her loved understudy her. was Elaine Stritch. <gasps> oh wow. Yeah. That's incredible. I, no, Elaine Stritch. Is, theater history. That it's very interesting and very interesting. I mean, it's way before. I mean, I was around, I'm sure. I was right. just too young to appreciate theater then. I was probably two years old. So if I was born at all, I don't know. What year was um, Call Me Madam? Do you 1950. know? 1950. Yeah, I wasn't born, yeah. so that's why. But I wanted to go back and see some of her old movies because <coughs> I really admire her work and saw that film recently, actually, a few years ago. You should look years at ago. Uh, Mad Mad World. Oh, I've seen She's that one. Funny in that. That's a great film. That's about, and, and I love. No business like show business. Oh, I, I've seen that too. I love that movie. That's a great film. I like to look at them now. I, I actually oh, watch sure. these movies now. I think Turner Movie Classics. Are, oh, I you know. It's on all day. Exactly, and yeah. they have all these movies. If I, when I, you know, I just turn and flip and find it, and I just, yeah. you know, I'll see a lot of movies halfway through, <laughs> and you know, then I'll have to find out about them and get them on Netflix and see the whole movie. Yeah. And do you so. get IMDB so you can... IMDB? Sure, and sure. Very interesting. Absolutely. And then they have one for Broadway, too. IBD, IBDB. IBDB. Right. Yes. So. Yeah. That's great. Well, your show is wonderful. Thank I you. loved it. And Thank you. I think people should come and see it. I think and, they should, too. Yeah. And then what's next for you after this show? Do you have another show in the works? I, mean, I do. I always try to have one show ahead. So there's uh -huh. one on the back burner now, and it's called Taylor and Finn. Oh, and what is that about? And it's a two-hander about P.T. Barnum. Interesting. Yeah, where I would play the older Barnum. Uh -huh. And then another fellow, a younger fellow, would play the young Barnum, uh -huh. and how they meet and intertwine in their lives. And then I would play other characters in his life, and vice versa. Oh, very interesting. Yeah, right? so we'll probably get that up and running in the fall sometime. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, but I'd like to tour this. I have some offers to uh, take it to uh, Dallas and San Francisco. And Oh, that's and wonderful. And a couple of other places. So I'm not finished with Character Man quite yet. That's great. Well, well, hopefully, you know, people who read you in Dallas and San Francisco can see you, you know, do you have any idea when it's going to be in those places? No, that's pretty going to be uh, uh, figured out next couple of weeks. The, uh, the Dallas, the San Francisco people were here already. The Dallas people are coming over the weekend. Mm -hmm. And then they got to figure out their seasons. They're putting them together now. Got it. So I think in the next uh, month we should know what the future of the show is. Great. Well, but we'll still be here at Irving. That's State, great. Well, people who are in the West 30th Street. people in New York should come and see it. And I agree with that. Yes, Red. and then you have you might have an opportunity to see it in San Francisco or Dallas. See it again. See it two, three times. I'm ever fascinating. It's you. You are, and <laughs> and and um, I hope that you know it has another life, maybe even in a bigger theater. Or something. That'd be marvelous. If yeah. they would agree, I would agree. Great. Well, thank you so much thank for doing you, this Corinne. interview.